life into cricket by reinventing its most subtle art. Again and again, he's done extraordinary things in the most difficult of circumstances. His intensity and passion have driven him to his finest moments and to his worst. The greatest spin bowler of all time, Shane Warne, is one of ESPN's legends of cricket. The first test of the 1993 Ashes series and Shane Warne's first ball in Ashes cricket. He ambles in to deliver what will become the most talked about single delivery in the history of the game. First ball, he's bowled him. Gatting can't believe it, Dickie Bird. I suppose he can't believe it. It was a tremendous delivery which pitched outside of the line of the leg stump. It turned so much that it hit, it hit the top of the off off, uh, off stump, off middle stumps. It's just one of those moments, I suppose, in cricketing history where a young man brought on tour for his first Ashes clash, if you like, uh, his Ashes tour, and uh, his first ball, he, he rocks up, and uh, as he says to me, he said, all I tried to do, Gat, was just spin it as much as I could, and he did. The expression on Gatting's face, I think, it was just priceless. Oh, actually, I don't think anybody could describe that delivery. I don't think anybody could sum that delivery up better than just the expression on Gatting's face at the time. It was just, it was just perfection. It was a, it was one of those perfect sporting moments. The, the stage, the, the delivery itself, the execution of it. Um, but to, to just, when you watch it in replay all these years later, and you watch that drift away, and then the, the, the darting turn back in, um, it is just one of one of the most wonderful balls, and to be fair, there were more, there were others like that in his career. But again, it was just the stage that it was delivered on. I think is, is what made it so incredibly special. At his best, Warren is pinpoint accurate. He can impart astonishing spin on the ball and he can rethink his strategy spell by spell, over by over, ball by ball. He's given out. He comes on balls now, and his first ball lands on that spot. Very rare for him to be carted in his first over when all leg spinners are trying to get loose and their fingers are not quite right. And straight away, Shane Warne gets success. It was an absolute privilege to be sitting in the commentary box watching him bowl because he did bring something extra special to every single game that he played in. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a more competitive cricketer. And, you know, let's face it, it's not that easy to be really competitive all the time as a leg spinner unless you're really very good. I mean, I can understand how uh, fast bowlers can... Uh, be seen to be competitive all the time because they've got that little thing up their sleeve which is intimidation. Um, Warren brought intimidation in a different fashion. He brought it through flight and guile. Slipped there. Oh. He's bowled him, has he? I think he has bowled him around his legs. He's got this fantastic little drift that comes in and uh, which makes it that much more difficult for a, bow, uh, for a batsman to go down the pitch and try and charge him in a premeditated fashion. And he's got so much spin, so much turn that uh, it's very difficult to attack him consistently. Great bowler and you know with all greats uh, you know they have everything I mean, they're complete cricketers and all the you know skills needed for a leg spinner were there with Shane Warne but what really stood out for me was uh, perhaps one of the most intelligent bowlers that I've played against uh, very smart up here uh, he'd know exactly what the batsman's strengths and weaknesses were and great attitude towards the game. A guy like Warren, he's not only is he taking wickets, but he's just building pressure the whole time. And I think that's what sets him apart from the rest of the spinners in world cricket, I believe, in that he is not only deadly, but he also contains the ball really well. Peel and going. He is an outstanding bowler. Watching him, he's obviously one of the best uh, to, to turn the ball as much as he has and with, with that control of drift and, uh, and accuracy. 
um, has been amazing over the years. I, mean, I think he's the best leg spinner that, that certainly that I've ever seen and maybe that's that's ever played. Oh, he's, ah! he's gone, he's stumped. He has absolutely transformed cricket in the second half of the 20th century. Now, anybody who can do that it makes an impact on the game, which is equivalent to WG in, in its way. And so, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you may say about uh, Warney, he's, he's done that. And he is just a fantastic bowler. And it's so, it, it, whether it comes to him easily or hard or whatever, but he's such a natural. And he's done so much for, I mean, he is without doubt the finest leg spin bowler in, in history. I mean, there's no question about that. Richie Benner, who was not far behind, says so. And uh, that was good enough for me. Oh, it's right back and he's out, so the innings is over. He is the best leg spin bowler I've ever seen in my life. Anyone who changes the face of the game of cricket has always got a chance of being uh, regarded more highly than anyone else. And Shane Warne changed the face of cricket from 1990 onwards. Shane Warne first played test match cricket somewhat by default. He had not shown anything special, and spin bowlers at the time were generally held in low regard. The great bowlers of the 1980s were, were fast bowlers or swing bowlers. The West Indians, Lily Thompson, uh, Imran Khan, and others who supported him. Uh, Wazim Akram came through, Wakar Yunus. So it was really all fast bowlers until this fellow comes along. and. Uh, bamboozles batsman with his, with his spin and his guile and he brought spin back into into international cricket and gave us back really what was what is an essential part of the game oh, a good fire. What a glorious light cut. What... on his debut against india in 1992 warren struggled his match figures were one for 150 he had great technique and you could see that he had put unbelievable revs on the ball the revolutions was you can hear the ball go through the air, amazing. But he didn't bowl well to India of all the guys, you know, because they're breastfed on spinners and Ravi Shastri particularly took a liking to him. And I remember he got out for 206, I think it was, and I caught one deep extra cover as his first test wicket. And I gave him the ball and he's sort of relieved I've got a wicket. And you know, I said, well done, you've got an average now of 150. <laughs> he wasn't happy with that. It's in the air, Jones under it. That's the end of the innings. Shane Warne gets his first test wicket. Well, he has to be one of the great spinners of all time. And uh, you could see it coming. You know, I remember picking up the Man of the Match award in that test match in Sydney. And uh, as I was going into the dressing room, there were a few Aussies already in there. And I saw Warney pass by outside the dressing room. And I stopped. I gave him a tap on his shoulder. And I said, young man, you'll bowl a lot worse than this and pick up five or six. And uh, the reason why I said it was uh, the control he showed right through that test match. The breakthrough match for Warne was the first test of the 1992 series against Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka. The hosts were left needing 181 to win and were 7 for 150 when Alan Border threw the ball to Warne. He took 3 for none and Australia won by 16 runs. Then Alan Border threw in the ball and this guy's got figures of 1 for 250 now and then Alan Border said to me, win me the game against Sri Lanka when he got three for 14. Game, set and match, a, a superstar was born. Back home in Australia, Warne was overlooked for the first test of the 1992-93 series against the West Indies. Recalled for the second, he bowled Australia to victory. People talk about the, the gadding ball as being a critical moment in Shane Warne's career. But in actual fact, six months before that, he bowled a flipper at Richie Richardson at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, which bowled him and set Australia on the way to victory. And it was came in a, in a test where Warren took seven for 52 and for the first time spun Australia to victory in a home test match in front of his own fans. That, I think, was the ball that showed Australian cricket fans that he was a great talent. Goodness me. He's on his way. It's all over for Ken Rutherford. That really spun across him and took the edge. 
Later the same season, Warren bowled brilliantly on a short tour of New Zealand. The Kiwi batsman struggled against his quality leg spin. Warren's confidence and reputation grew match by match. Oh, he's gone! Warren took 34 wickets on the Ashes series of 1993, which began with that famous ball to Mike Gatting. I can remember the lead up to that was uh, we were playing against Worcester and uh, Graham Hick was playing for Worcester and he was going to be in the England side. And I gave Warney pretty strict instructions not to sort of give too much away. Um, you know, bowl by all means and get into a bit of a rhythm, but don't give too much away. And of course, Hickey, you know, was in pretty good form in those days and he took to our bowling generally, but Warney in particular, and hit quite a few sixes and end up making a big, big hundred. And Warney was sort of a bit dejected and upset about all this, but I said, you know, it doesn't really matter, mate, this is just warm up. Uh, wait for the, the real event that starts, you know, next week up in Manchester. In 1994, the Cricketer's Bible, Wisdom, named Warren as one of its Players of the Year. In Australia, he had the media profile of a pop star. There's no question that the game needs characters. Cricket is competing on a global level against all sorts of sports for sponsorship dollars and indeed the public's interest. Um, so in order for the game to thrive, it really does require people who can capture the public imagination. And there's no question that Shane has been able to do that. In the main, Warren has responded well to the pressures of expectation and media scrutiny. There have, however, been some unsavoury moments. He's a character, he's, uh, there's a larrikin element in, in Shane, and I, I think anyone that succeeds at that level has to have that sort of larrikin element. If you haven't got a sense of humour and a, a sense of fun, you're not going to survive in that cauldron for a long period of time and not come out of it reasonably sane. And, I, and Shane's got that. You know, he's got the larrikin element, he's got the sense of fun. I mean, from time to time, he's gone over the top. But by and large, uh, he's been good for, for Australian cricket. And, and the thing that I like about the bloke is that he hasn't changed very much. A highly controversial figure uh, through life. Um, you know, always very opinionated, uh, rub people up the wrong way. Controversy prone, you know. There was, um, you know, incidents with bookmakers and bans for illegal diuretics. Uh, all these things, I think, you know, rub you know, a fair portion of the, of the cricket watching public up the wrong way. But I think it, it, those who, who could separate Warren the bowler from Warren the man probably didn't have that bigger issue. I think those who saw it as a bit of, as a, you know, all encasing package, perhaps, uh, you know, this is where the love-hate divide, you know, starts to come in. The Ashes series of 1994-95 saw Warren produce another stunning performance. After career best figures of 8 for 71 in the first test, he took a hat-trick at the MCG in the second match of the series. Warren continued to dazzle on the cricket field until Australia's tour of India in 1998. By this time, he was troubled by an injured shoulder and the master batsman Sashim Tendulkar took a heavy toll of his bowling. Indian players have always played Shane Warne and leg spinners very well and, and uh, you know I, I, a lot of people say that his record against India is a black mark against him but I, uh, I, I think you've got to give credit where it's due and, and they just played him that way. so much better than anybody else. After having surgery on the shoulder Warne was forced to sit and watch as a new leg spinner Stuart McGill took the limelight. With Warne struggling for fitness and form Mark Taylor retired in early 1999 and Steve Waugh became Australian captain. Before Waugh's appointment, there was much media speculation on Shane Warne's suitability for the role. In a game you know, where you want to maintain credibility, you've got to see to it that the people that uh, are chosen to lead, uh, whether they're leading England or leading Australia, uh, behave well. And there's no doubt that uh, Shane Warne went through a period 
where um, he got caught out uh, and, you know, he was headlines every week for all the wrong reasons. And uh, it's a very, very sad thing, by the way, that, that he didn't um, kick on to become captain of Australia because there's absolutely no doubt that he would have been a wonderful captain. In the early stages of the 1999 World Cup, Australia performed poorly. Both Steve Waugh and Shane Warne appeared less than secure in their positions. Warne even contemplated retirement. But champions can never be discounted. It was an incredible tournament, really. I mean, um, and I think one that modern World Cup tournament organisers would, would dearly like to replicate again. You had an Australian team that, that could not afford to lose another game. They, they had to win every game uh, from where they were to, to progress. And it was a, it was a really rocky road, um, you know, all the way through to a semi-final against South Africa, which, uh, you know, to this day, I think, shows up on the back of the eyelids of, of Alan Donald and, and Lance Klusner at night. Um, the, the, the incredible tie in, in the semi-final, which, which got Australia through to the final. Warren continued to bowl solidly as the Australians set new records for consecutive wins in both tests and one-day matches. The consensus was that he was still good, but perhaps no longer great. A finger injury forced Warren out of the 2000-2001 home series against the West Indies. He did enough in the one-day internationals to beat Stuart McGill for a place on the tour of India, but he had a poor series. Once the ball was in his hands, you know, he just loved his job. You know, one of those guys who just loved turning up and bowling. Uh, so it was about a contest between you and me. And it was almost enjoyment for him. You know, the pressure aspect was out of the way. It wasn't pressure. It was really about this guy, if he's a skilled batsman, he's going to be a tougher challenge for me. That is what I, you know, struck me about Shane Warne every time I watch him. Even now, you know, post-retirement, when he has the ball in his hand, he seems a guy who's thrilled. And every ball, you know, there is great intensity. 31 wickets in the 2001 Ashes series solidified Warren's position ahead of McGill and his march towards 500 test wickets gathered more momentum with a stunning 78-wicket haul over 12 tests between late 2001 and 2002. But as was often the case, controversy was around the corner. The 2003 World Cup in South Africa was to be Warren's farewell from one day international cricket. The day before Australia's first game of the tournament, it emerged that Warren had tested positive to a banned drug. He was sent home in disgrace. Just before the tournament came the shocking news that he'd failed a drugs test. He'd taken a, a diuretic which was on the banned list. At age 33, having already taken nearly 500 test wickets, you had to really think that perhaps his career was over. Without Warren, the Ricky Ponting-led Australians won the tournament without losing a match. Warren was to serve out a 12-month suspension, his career in tatters. Shane Warne's return to cricket following his 2003 suspension was much anticipated. He immediately rejoined the test team, where he took 10 wickets in his comeback game, which also included his 500th test wicket. He was to have a relentless battle with Sri Lanka's bamboozling off-spinner Mutaya Muralitharan for the world record number of wickets in test cricket. Murali briefly overtook West Indian Courtney Walsh's mark of 519 scalps, but it was to be a brief sojourn. And it was in Chennai, during the second test of the 2004 series against India, that Warne took the mantle as the greatest wicket-taker in the history of test match cricket. It was typical of Warne that he broke the record in spin-mad India. He did it against a team that he hadn't had a lot of success against in the past. Back in his first test, Tendulkar and Shastri had smashed him. But this was an important series, an important game, on the biggest stage, and Warney came through. Age would not diminish Warne's hunger for success, and he saved his greatest masterpiece for one of the most eagerly awaited series in cricket's history, the 2005 Ashes. To me, the thing that shows just how good Warne was in that 2005 Ashes series is that the BBC gave an annual award to the best overseas sporting personality. They could have given it to Roger Federer or Lance Armstrong, but that year they gave it to Warne. Warne collected an astonishing 40 wickets, as well as 242 runs, but his single-handed heroics weren't enough to carry his country, as England won back the Ashes, ending an 18-year drought. 
but the series only enhanced the legend. He's the all-time great. All time. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I mean, uh, Abdul Kader was a, was a fine bowler. And I'm sure Richie Benno was, and I'm sure there are other bowlers. Um, but for somebody to get and do what he's done, um, to me, he's uh, the all-time great leg spinner. He came onto the scene towards the end of my uh, cricket captaincy. But the, the two or three years I had with Warney was, you know, the most enjoyable uh, I had as a captain. And it was just that variety of attack. But Warney, his coming into the Australian cricket scene, you know, I think has been one of the best things that we've, we've ever experienced. Yes! Shane Warne's had an enormous impact on the game of cricket, particularly in Australia. I and mean, he's, he's the best leg spinner I've ever seen. And the thing that I like about the bloke is that he hasn't changed very much. Uh, I remember um, coaching the Australian A team back in the, the mid 90s, and you know, Shane was a, an established test cricketer at that stage. He was the only one of the Australian players at that stage who came to the Australian A team and wished the guys well and, and rang up on a couple of occasions and uh, passed messages on via me because he remembered where he'd come from and he remembered that he was a young player once and that he'd, he'd needed some help. And um, you know, I, I think um, you know, I respected him for, for that. Um, He's a match winner, and you know he's he's created uh, interest in cricket. You know, you know, some love him, some love to hate him, but they talk about him and they notice him, and that's um, that's been good for Australian cricket. He has mastered a very difficult craft. I mean, I I've, I can't even bowl off spin, let alone leg spin, and you know he's someone who's who's achieved an amazing record on, on the field. And, uh, you know, I've got a great respect for him on and off the field. He's uh, quite an intimidating bloke when he bustles in, when he's uh, in full flight. But I've, I think I've seen through him. He's quite a softy at heart. I really, I really believe he's a softy at heart. He's, I've seen too many good signs and too many good things from Shane Warne off the field um, to be intimidated by him on the field. I think he's a, I respect his bowling. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think I see through that bustle and the aggro on the field. Um, he's just too good a person to, for me to be carried away by it. I think he's a great, great sportsman. And uh, to put it in very short and simple, he's a great trier. He doesn't give up. And uh, when somebody plays well, he appreciates. And that's a sign of a great sportsman. Uh, I don't need to talk much about Juan because the whole world has seen what he's capable of. He's a, he's a, he's a great guy, great company. And uh, when it com comes to competitiveness, he has that in him, which is, which is a great sign. My lasting memory of Shane Warne is just a wonderful cricketer and by the way, a really nice bloke. A Shane Warne um, in an environment around a dinner table, um, just wonderful company. There will unfortunately be those people who will point to some of his indiscretions but at the end of the day, um, those of us lucky enough to have watched him and to have known him, well, you know, all I can say, we're the better for it. He's a contradictory and controversial figure, but his achievements in cricket and his influence on future generations of bowlers have earned him a place in ESPN's Legends of Cricket. <laughs>